Well, I got a new tool in the shop. I've got a project that I'm going to do where I need one of these, and I decided to take a chance on the cheapest one on Amazon. So, what's in the box? Seven inch working platform. Although, those in the English language call this an adjustable angle plate. So, let's take a look in here and see what we got. Yeah, she's oily. And we got a wrench and a paintbrush as well. I'm gonna clean it down a little bit so I can handle it without getting oil all over me. All right, like I said, first impressions are pretty good. It's fairly well finished. I do feel some burrs, but a good stone will take care of that. We've got a dial on the side. Do have some nasty burrs here on the edge of the on the edge of the feet. Let's put the handle together and see how well it moves. That's good enough for now. We'll get our wrench out here and loosen up the set bolts. Looks like there's one on each side, of course. A little stiff. Get that loose a little bit. Put the lever on. And first thing I notice is that the lever is long, which is gonna make some adjustments on the table kind of iffy. Never had one of these before, never really had a use for it. But like I say, well, I've had uses for it, but I've gotten away without doing them. Let's just put it that way, without having one. There we go. So yeah, so if you got it flat on the table, the handle's kind of useless. Set it up on this block of wood here, so I can just make it work. So we got so much slop in that worm screw that's making the adjustment that it'd be very difficult to get a fine adjustment. In fact, it sort of has points where it actually skips a little bit. I mean, you can see that's how much slop you got in the worm screw. You're not going to be making fine adjustments with this. You can actually see sometimes it will actually skip, especially going down. Let's see it again. So it's going along nice, going along nice, and then see it just drop five th or five degrees. <laughs> I guess as the uh, as the weight takes over and the tipping point of it, it overcomes the slop in the screw. Let's see if it'll go all the way to fifty degrees, and not quite 48, 48 degrees. You're not making adjustments on the fly with this thing. You're not doing anything, any weird milling with it. So I'm going to get it back up to zero. I'm going to lock it down. It's just got a bolt on each side to lock it down. The finish is not terrible. It's just um, a ground, a light ground finish. There are some burrs here on the chamfers. So yeah, let's go put it on the um, milling table and test a few things. So this thing is approximately seven inches long or what's that, 160 millimeters. And about five and just a little over five, five and an eighth or 130 millimeters. And it fits nicely on this table, which is seven and three quarters, 200, 200 millimeters by five and seven eighths, about, f what's that, uh, 150 millimeters. It's a good fit on the table, and you notice that it's got, its mounting pegs actually sit right where these T-slots are, which is nice. Um, doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to mount it this way, however. No, I wouldn't be able to mount it sideways. That's fine. That's gonna be fine for my purposes. 
Uh, again, I'll have to do something with this handle because it is going to hit right there. Not a huge deal, but you know, I'll probably just make like a little T nut or something on there to adjust it instead of this thing. This thing's kind of stupid. It's bad design. Uh, but anyway, the first thing I notice when I put it on here though is tippy tippy. And I know that my table is pretty flat. Make sure there's nothing on here. Let's put the plate down on top of it and see what it does. Yeah, the plate's pretty flat. Maybe it's just uh, I got a little burr or something that's causing that. So let me quick stone it real quick. I'll take off some of these sharp edges. They're pretty sharp. Yeah, see that's that's not great. Still got that wobble in it. That's going to have to be addre addressed. Ooh, that's sharp. I mean, it's going to be accurate enough for my purposes, but, but you know, in, in the interest of full disclosure, that's, that's not great. Uh, like I said, the top seemed pretty flat, but uh, from corner to corner, that's not great. All right, so I played with it a little bit off camera, and I did get it a little bit better. It's still not perfect. So, you know, in the future, maybe I'll go and mount it upside down somehow and maybe skim the top or the bottom. For right now, what I've done is just um, I've put it in. I've actually tightened it down with some uh, T-nuts on both sides, and I have it set to zero. Um, I don't have it locked down all the way. I just kind of loosely have it set to zero, and I'm going to see how accurate it is. Okay, so you can see I got an absolute reading there of 0.1. That's, that's my machine. And then we'll put it on the table. Same settings. And we're at 0.4 now. For the side to side, I know that, or this direction, I know that my machine is a little bit cattywampus. When I first set it up, it was damn near dead on, but I think the floor, see I have a wood floor, so I think it has settled a little bit. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm not going to use, I'm not going to use the absolute on this. I'm going to use zeroing functions. So you see, I see, kind of see it there. The table's at 1.2. I'm going to zero that. Bring it up here. Pretty good. Let's try the back. Pretty good. The edges, yeah. See, we fall off with, eh, just a little bit on the on that edge. Same on that edge. That one's pretty good, and that one's pretty good. So I've got it basically level here, and I'm gonna do one more little check. I'm gonna run it, run the uh, table across the uh, the DTI the indicator, and. We're going to see what we get. I got it basically set to zero here. This is only a thousandths indicator, so each increment is a thousand. I'm not expecting much out of this. I think I'm going to lose a few thousands from side to side because of the rockiness of the base. In, in my application, it's not that big of a deal, a few thousandths. This table is really not going to be used that much for milling, per se, as it will be to, to set an accurate angle to drill a hole. What I bought this for was I have a BSA uh, 250 cylinder that has a bungled up spark plug hole. So to get this spark plug hole, you need to mount it at that angle, basically, so that you can drill that hole accurately. And I'm going to have to drill out what's uh, the broken spark plug in it, basically. And I've had this I've had this job before, so I thought it wouldn't be a bad time to invest in one of these. Typically, before I did some sort of Rube Goldberg mock up weird system of doing it, and it worked, um, you know, using um, blocks and hold downs and, and that kind of thing. But I thought this would be a little bit more um, quicker to set up, a little more accurate, and maybe I could use it for other things as well. But 
I don't really see myself doing a milling operation that does this method. So for right now, this measurement is really not a huge deal to me, although I suspect that because this table is a little bit wobbly, this measurement's not going to be that great. So we're going to start at zero here. So that's half the table. So far, so good. Oh, here it goes. There we go. So we're going we're to get as much as 4,000. That's about as far as my table will go accurately. So we got about three and a half thousandths there of side to side. Although you, you would notice that for half of that travel, it was pretty much on. So that's not bad. Just out of curiosity, let's try the other side. Alright, okay, that fell the other direction by mm, two thousandths, almost two thousandths, just, just short of two thousandths. So just out of curiosity, let's see how accurate it, the, the scale is here. Okay, that's interesting. We're at 35 degrees here, roughly, okay, and we're at, we're at 34 degrees, and we're roughly at 34 degrees on the thing, so that's, that's pretty good, however, I can't go any farther because the boss on the other side of the worm screw is actually hitting the milling table. So this piece here actually comes over and hits the table here and doesn't let it do a full rotation. So the only way you would get a 45 degree or anything over 35 degrees with this was if you were mounted and what would you mount that on? I'm not sure. That's that's interesting. I n had never thought about that before. The table will technically go all the way over, but not if you have something in the way right here. You, this would have to be open. Well, what you could do is you could put one, two, three blocks under here, I guess, on each side. That would raise it up enough to get your extra. Uh, something to think about, though, because that's, um, that's going to raise... Any way you do it, that raises this block up, which means you're even you even got less space between your head and or your milling head. So that's an issue with these, and I would imagine that that's an issue with all of these, of this type anyway. I don't think that's going to affect me for the job that I have to do, but I was kind of kind of planning on this thing being able to do a 45, and didn't even consider that aspect of it. In my case, it's probably not going to be a big deal to raise this by about an inch with some blocks. I should have enough headspace, um, but um, in a lot of instances that may not be good on small mills, on mini mills. So something to something to keep in mind. We're already at um, we're already uh, what uh, three and a quarter inches tall as a riser, which on a lot of mini mills would be a, a good riser size. I would think. Um, on this one it's a perfect riser size almost. But another inch though, it's going to make a difference. Um, something else to keep in mind with this is that, and I didn't really realize this, my T-nuts are, I think these are considered half inch T-nuts. I think that's what they're considered. They don't fit. They don't fit in either direction. So I'm going to have to make some smaller T-nuts. They are... So the overall width of the bottom is 700 thousandths or 17.9 millimeter. Mine are 19.2 millimeter. The width of the top of the T on these is 400 thousandths or... 10 millimeter. Obviously, that's going to be an issue for for me. I got to make I got to make new T nuts. I mean, you know, it is what it is. So I hope that gives you a, a bit of an overview of what to expect with this guy. It's about what I expected it to be. Let's just put it that way. It has some issues. It's not perfect. Anyway, guys, I hope this uh, didn't run too long and uh, that it was helpful to somebody. So look forward to that BSA head coming up. We're gonna we're gonna do that and. Uh, I'll put a link to one of these in the description. 
I'm sure that eBay sells basically the same thing from a different company that probably made in the same factory. So uh, you can get it there, you can get it on Amazon. For my money, it's um, it's it's going to be usable. So certainly not a pump jump. Okay, anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.